this is for the animal lovers out there and if you haven't been to the Philippines um, be prepared and th this is predominantly around dogs and cats now one of the things I will say is if you're quite ske squeamish you probably won't want to cover the topics we're about to do um, especially if you love your pets and animals um, because it relates to how things get treated in the Philippines okay so be warned if you don't want to watch it switch off first thing I want to talk about is the general treatment where you find a lot of dogs on a little bit of rope tied up to the side of a house they're just used as a guard dog nothing more they bark when somebody comes that is basically it as such they're not treated very well they don't get very good food and you normally find they have skin conditions and other problems because they don't exercise they're basically just tied to the side of the house next type is very similar which is normally in a bigger house for example when you've got your own compound or you've got parking with a gate behind it they leave them in cages all the time similar thing they get leg problems because they're not exercised enough and they're sat in a cage all day um, also suffer with things like dehydration and other problems those things are very normal I come across it all the time when I'm in the Philippines um, people do not see it as wrong they just see it as normal um, as such it's very difficult to deal it you know to go and tell somebody it's wrong when they see it as normal um, the other side of this is you get the ascals the um, wild dogs the strays which are normally in very very poor condition they have normally got skin infections and other things they have allergies from the dust and all sorts so they often don't have any fur um, these these dogs um, you find everywhere but I do not understand why there's no sterilization program to actually reduce the numbers because it would actually make sense you know humanely make sense but anyway it, I mean I don't know as to tied in with the bill of health and the church and the anti um, what do you call it the birth control stuff I am not sure uh, it just seems bizarre uh, but anyway so you, a lot of those dogs are in poor condition and you probably think well why don't they eat the rubbish why don't they eat the bones why don't they Filipinos love bones you'll see that they chew on the chicken bones they'll eat they want the marrow out of the bones the sucking bits of the meat so by the time it gets down the food chain to the dogs and the cats there ain't a lot left now, obviously the majority of people in the Philippines aren't living that well in the first place um, so there isn't a lot to go around this is why you know I'm pro sterilization to reduce the number of dogs because they're not being looked after because obviously if there's more food and everything about they may be able to look after themselves um, now the other side of things that go on in the Philippines is dog meat is still big business dog meat has been big business forever um, it is something that is very very common it's very, very illegal, it has heavy fines, it has imprisonment sentences. It's been illegal since 1998 and the Animal Welfare Act. But people still do it because it's very, very profitable. Um, also, people like eating dog meat. Now, I talked to somebody about this before, about the way they... Well, you know, because he talked about he's eating dog meat before. And one of the things they do is they hang them up in a bag and they'll beat it because it tenderizes the meat and it's to do with um, the the blood pumping around etc um, which is I'm not 100% sure that's correct though because when you're I mean I, I was watching uh, a guy that hunts deer for meat he did, you know he's not actually well he is a hunter but he's not a he's not doing it for sport he's actually doing it for the farms um, but they have to kill the deers instantly because if they get scared and the blood starts pumping it ruins the meat so this seems to reverse and the only reason I'm bringing this up is like I'm not sure that the guy is actually correct about hanging it in the bag but um, I'm, I'm not saying they didn't do it because they do um, but I'm saying that I don't think they're correct about the blood pumping around but obviously it's getting a bit gruesome and that's going a little bit off topic but be aware it goes on it still goes on um, there's too much money involved 
Now, there's about 300,000 dogs killed every year for meat. That, that, that's roughly the sort of figure that the government come up with. Um, the next bit, which is something that's been outlawed for years, but still goes on, is dog fighting. Dog fighting is still big business, but it's often offshore sponsored. For example, the Koreans um, will use it on the internet for the gambling. It's illegal gambling, and they have professional fighting pits, etc., and it still goes on. Um, completely illegal, and the police do raid and shut these places down, but it does happen. Now, that's the spectrum of things that can go wrong. And the first thing I want to say is dogfighting still goes on in the UK. It, you know, it still goes on in some remote farms. Um, as such, well, even in Birmingham, I think a couple of years back there was a raid relating to dogfighting in Birmingham. There is still a lot of this stuff goes on in the UK. But if you're going, because the UK blinkers you, let's be honest, it doesn't show you the, the realities of the world or even the UK most of the time. But going to the Philippines, you will find these dogs tied up in neighborhoods. You will find stray dogs walking along the street with struggling to walk, hardly any fur, etc. Um, that stuff is very, very normal. Um, it's just stuff to be aware of. Um, so if you are an animal lover, just prepare yourself. And you can't rescue everybody so or everything. So just be aware. Thanks for watching.